This is what we're going to go with. This is the common domino which we're going to try and get. I want sine, cos, and tan all in terms of this. Just like I got all my fractions in terms of this. Okay? So how do I do it? Well, this is tan x on 2. Let's use our double angle results, right? Because half angle and double angle are really the same thing, just wearing different clothes. Okay? So let's see if we can remember. Tan 2x. What's the double angle result, the expansion for tan 2x? It's a, it's a fraction. That's my clue. Does anyone remember? 2 tan x on the top. Yeah, good. Well done. All right, now if I want to convert from this into something that has half angles instead of double angles, all I have to do is divide all of the angles by 2. Okay? Every single one. So if I do this one by 2, it'll just become regular tan. And then if I divide these by 2, I'll get 2 tan x on 2 on the top, and 1 minus tan squared x on 2 on the bottom. Just a straight substitution. Okay. So since I'm using this, I'm naming that as my common denominator, I call it this just so it's shorter to write. So I get 2t on 1 minus t squared. Okay. So those of you who might have seen this before, you're like, oh, I recognize that. Okay. <coughs> now, at this point, remember what I'm trying to get is sine and cosine as well. I want to get all of them in terms of these t's. So your intuition might lead you to think, okay, tan, right? Sine, cos, and tan, they're all about um, right angle triangles. At least that's where we started learning about them. So I can make a right angle triangle with this ratio in it, right? Tan, which two sides does it relate in a right angle triangle? Opposite and adjacent. So let's make for ourselves a right angle triangle with these two sides in it, okay? So if I do this, right angle, okay? And I'll put my x in the corner, okay? The opposite side will be here, and the adjacent side will be here, okay? Now, if we want to work out what this hypotenuse is, right? Um, I just use Pythagoras, so it's the sum of the other two squared. Okay, so this will be four t squared. This will be one minus two t plus t squared, right? So, sorry, wait, what have I done? You left out the squared on the one minus t. Yeah, thank you. There we go. That should be a four, and that should be a squared. That's better. So now you can see these t squareds, they mixed together. So I'm going to get t to the 4 plus 2t squared plus 1. And this is a perfect square, right? t squared plus 1, all squared. So if that's the square of the hypotenuse, then I just take the square root of both sides just after the positive value because it's a length. So that's where I get this from. Okay? Does that make sense? Not slowly, I mean, this is making sense. So, yeah. Alright. Now, just look at that triangle, okay? You would probably conclude, rightly, that if I wanted sine, it would be uh, opposite on hypotenuse. So I could say sine x is opposite on hypotenuse. And likewise, cos x is the other ratio, adjacent on hypotenuse. Okay? So this is kind of cool. I've got one, two, three results. And I've avoided this plus minus business, right? That's really good. Now, here's the, the caution I want to give you. Put your pens down for a second. You'll have time to continue, but I want you to hear this warning because it's important. This triangle, okay, it's a really handy tool for remembering what are these ratios, okay? Because you can draw this, you can work it out by Pythagoras, and you can see. You can read sine, cos, and tan off it, okay? So it's really cool. You know how when you're first learning exact values and you're trying to remember uh, root 3 on 2 and a half and that kind of thing, so you draw your 30... 60, 90 triangle, right? And you're like, uh, this is 1 over 2, so this must be root 3, right? So I compare this uh, as a similar tool to this to help you remember, okay? But you mustn't use it as an actual proof, okay? Can anyone tell me, why is there a problem with using this as a proof for these results? Yeah? What happens if t is greater than 1? t is greater than 1? So this here. Okay, so there's my first problem. Okay, um, I'm going to get a triangle which has negative lengths. That's that's a problem. Um, that actually comes out of another problem, right? Which is that all this while it's a right angle triangle, right? So x has some domain restrictions on it, right? What kind of restrictions are there if it's in this triangle? It's it's got to be acute, right? It's got to be acute. You can't stick an obtuse angle and a right angle in the same triangle. 
because then you'll get the right angle and the obtuse and yeah, no triangle, okay? So therefore, this only works for this domain. Okay? And that's not good, right? These actually work, these identities, they work all the time, okay? Almost, we'll see in a second. Um, so we need a better way to prove it. So I still like this as a way of remembering what the ratios are, but if you get asked to prove them, this won't be enough. So let me show you how to do that. How did we prove that tan was equal to this? We didn't use a triangle, we used identities, right? Your double angle um, expansions that we learned from earlier in the term, earlier in the year, right? So I can actually use exactly the same approach to do sine and cosine, right? Here's the way I'm gonna think about it. Just like starting with tan 2x, let's do sine first. So sine 2x, what's the expansion? Two sine x, cos x, right? Okay. Now, this is double, so I want to convert it into halves. So divide every angle by 2, and you get this. Okay, so far so good. Now remember where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to get everything in terms of this T business, this tan x on 2. Okay, so if I'm going to try to get these into tan x on 2, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to have to introduce some division here, right? And I apologize, the steps that are going to follow they are a bit counterintuitive, it's like, why would you do that? But there aren't that many steps, they're quite easy to follow, so you won't have to re reproduce them too many times. Here's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna divide by one. But the kind of one I'm gonna divide by is sine squared plus cos squared. Okay, so what have I done? I've divided by one, so I haven't changed anything, okay? <coughs> All right, now, if I want to get this into tans, I'm going to have to divide, right? What should I divide by? Well, to turn sine into tan, you divide by cosine, right? So I'm probably going to divide everything through by not just one cosine, but cosine squared, because I've got a sine squared there. So I'm going to divide by two to match up. So if I divide numerator and denominator, all of the terms by cos squared. So this is what I'm going to do. Divide by cos squared x on 2. Let's just take it one at a time. On the top here, I'll put big brackets just to make it really obvious, right? I've got 2 sine x on 2, cos x on 2, divide by cos squared. Okay? I'll cancel in a second. Let's just get the bottom as well. On the bottom, we've got sine squared divided by cos squared. <coughs> and then I've got cos squared divided by cos squared. Okay, now that we've actually divided everything through, now let's start to cancel. One of these cosines will cancel with that one. Yeah, so cancel, cancel. Okay, so what am I left with on the top? Sine on cos. That's tan. Okay. What happens on the bottom here? Sine squared on cos squared, that's tan squared. Cos squared on cos squared, that's 1. And of course this is the t that we were working with before. And just to put it back in the order that we were looking at earlier. So that's kind of comforting <laughs> that we got the same result as a thumbs up, right? And now you can rinse and repeat and do exactly the same thing with cosine. This time, since you've seen the steps, I'm going to do it a little bit quicker. I'm going to go straight to the half angle one, right? So cos x, hmm, double angle for cos is, it's very similar to the Pythagorean identity, right? It's cos squared minus sine squared. Cos squared minus sine squared. So I'm going to have half angles on this side. Does that check out? Okay. Again, I'm going to divide by one. So there's my long, awkward one. And then again, I'm going to divide everything by cos squared. Okay? And this time, I'm not going to write this intermediate step. I'm actually going to do them one by one. Cos squared on cos squared, 1. Sine squared on cos squared, tan squared. 
on the bottom, one plus tan squared. One minus t squared, one plus t squared. Okay, so let's review. What are the results? Um, we start off with x being, sorry, tan x on two being equal to t. That's how, that's what makes it the t results, okay? Um, so therefore, just one tan, the whole thing, okay, that's 2t on 1 minus t squared. And you can remember that using the double angle formula, okay? And then when you go to sine, <coughs> same numerator, different denominator, okay? Because remember, it's opposite on adjacent, and this is opposite on hypotenuse, right? So that's why you, different, sorry, different, same. And lastly, cosine, 1 minus. 